Hi there, this is Jeff, and today I'm going to show you how I letter my comic strips real quickly using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I've found that Illustrator is maybe not the most intuitive program to use, and I do get a fair number of people asking me how I do my lettering, so I thought it might be useful to walk through it. Uh, here we have just a flattened 72 DPI version of panel 4 of my most recent comic, and I figured this would be a good little thing to demo my lettering process on. So. You can see here, I just have the image itself on the bottom layer. On top of that, I'm going to create two new empty layers. The upper layer is where I'll be putting the text, and then the bottom layer is where I'll be putting the speech bubbles. Let's go in and enter in some text. I'm going to zoom in just for accuracy's sake, and let's type something in real quick. I'm going to select the fonts that I use, which in this case are Blambot Casual, make sure it's aligned to center, and I'll just type something in. There we go. Uh, let's keep it classy with a fart joke, and we'll have Emily say something in response. Um, one thing I should show off real quick is that you can actually use the lettering tool to determine the basic shape of the text area that you're putting in. So, for instance, if I click and drag with the text tool, now it will only put the text in the square that's highlighted. So I can type a whole bunch of gibberish, and you can see it's just kind of auto-wrapping things. And this can be nice if you're trying to squeeze a lot of text into a small area. But for the purposes of this demo, we don't really need to do that, so I'll just click back again and enter it in manually. There we go. It's a stupid fart joke, which is perfect for this tutorial. So now that I've got the text done and basically positioned where I want it to be, I'm going to click on that lower layer that's still empty, and this is where I'm going to draw in my speech bubbles. I typically like to zoom way in for this just so I can get smooth lines out of it. And using the stylus on my Cintiq, I'm going to go and select the pencil tool, and I'm just going to draw a quick circle around the text. I'm going to click the little icon down here. I have no idea what it's called, but default fill and stroke. That's what it's called. I'm going to click that once. That way it will fill the background of the shape in with white, and it will automatically stroke the shape with one point of black. Now that I've got that set, I'm going to go over here and draw another circle around this. Click that button again, and there we go. Those are the basic speech bubbles. You can see I moved it around a little bit just to get it centered on the text, or as close to it as I can. At this point, what I will do is I'll zoom out a little bit, and by shift-clicking on both of these speech bubbles, I have them both selected. Now I'm going to go down here to the Pathfinder menu, just right down here, and click on this first Shape Mode button. This will unite the shapes, which, which basically just joins all of the lines together and should get rid of the overlap that you can see there. Alright, so you can see it has basically made the shapes contiguous. If I zoom in over here, you can see there's some line overlap here. But the easiest way to get rid of that is to just go up and hold down, click on the pen tool, go down to delete anchor point, and then I want to get rid of this anchor point over here, so I just have to click on it, actually click on the anchor point, and there we go, that's been deleted. Now we just have a little bump there that I'll be able to cover up with the tail of the speech bubble. I do the tails manually as well using the pencil tool, and I'm still on that same layer with the speech bubble shapes, and I can just draw them in very quickly. Uh, I want to get a slightly better shape than that, so there, I'm happy with that. And now, if I autofill that, you'll see it'll cover up that little bump there, and I can also use it to cover up the little bump that's visible right there. With that done, I can zoom back out, and you can see that the tails of the speech bubbles are still overlapping the bubbles themselves. I can fix that by, again, selecting everything on that layer and hitting the Unite tool down on the Pathfinder menu again. And there we go. Now we have nice, clean-looking speech bubbles. I typically like to increase the uh, weight of the stroke outline by about half a point, just because I think that fits in better with the uh, line weight of my inking. So I'm going to go over here to the Stroke menu and increase that to 1.5 points. I hit Enter, and by deselecting these, you can see that it's done. And that is basically how I do my lettering. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you some other time.